Hey, what's up guys? Alex here with a new video, and today we have a fun comparison between the Sony A7R5 and the brand new GFX100 Mark II. If you're new to the channel, I am a portrait photographer based out of Miami, Florida, and I primarily shoot with Sony and Leica. I've owned the Sony A7R5 now since launch, which is about a year, and I think it is the ultimate hybrid camera. I've owned the GFX100 Mark II now for three weeks, and I think it's the best medium format camera Fuji has released. But how do they stack up? So for today's video, I wanna pit them against each other and see if medium format is worth it or if medium format is for you. Like I do with all my videos, I will be providing all the images we review for you to download and check out yourself. I'm talking about the raw files. So I highly encourage you, go down below in the description box and download these images because YouTube's gonna compress them and you might not see exactly what I'm seeing on my computer screen. For today's video, I only wanna focus on image quality. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and play a slideshow with images labeled A and B. All these images have been color matched and edited with my preset, which is also available down below. And let's find out if you can tell the difference. So in the comments, please try to guess which camera's A and B and we'll be right back. was close, wasn't it? I did cheat a little bit, so let's talk about that. First and foremost, how did I cheat? Well, one, I matched the aspect ratios. So medium format shoots in a native four by three aspect ratio, which is more of a square format, and full frame shoots more of a longer rectangular format, 16 by nine. I matched them, which eliminates some of the benefits of medium format. I also cropped in a little bit to match the perspectives which also puts medium format in a disadvantage. And let me show you an example. I actually did a review on an APS-C lens, the Viltrox 27 millimeter F1.2 lens, and I was able to match APS-C to full frame pretty closely by doing the same technique, matching the composition, matching the perspective and the crop factor. So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you we have to look at these files a little bit closer. So let's go ahead and dig in on a few files and see if we can see some key differences and look at some of the key benefits of medium format. Okay, so let's go ahead and kick off this comparison. Like I mentioned before, all these files will be available for you to download and check out yourself. Today, we're gonna specifically look at three images. They have all been edited with my preset and color matched. And if you like the look, feel free to download my preset available down below. Enough talking, let's go ahead and get to pixel peeping. Here on the left hand side, we have the Sony a7R5. On the right hand side, we have the GFX and the dead giveaway is the 4-3 aspect ratio. Looking at these files from here, they both look great. Now keep in mind, the Sony is a 61 megapixel file, so we're gonna have resolution for days here when we look at both images. Let's go ahead and zoom in at 100%. And this is definitely not the most flattering photo to share, but we're looking at detail here. And you're gonna see here on the left-hand side, the Sony has tons of resolving power and there's nothing wrong with this image. If you can't make the Sony look good, I mean, it's definitely on you. But when you look at the medium format file, you see you have an extra layer of detail and texture on the skin. And you can see here specifically on the left-hand side, you can see some of the skin texture here on the Sony, of course, right, 61 megapixels. 
But on the GFX, you just get another layer of detail on the skin. You see just every little piece of texture and it is a lot. So zooming out, let's go ahead and talk about some of the main differences you'll see with medium format. And that is one compression and different field of view. So here we have a 55 millimeter lens with a GFX with a 44 millimeter perspective versus with the Sony, you have a 50 millimeter lens with a 50 millimeter perspective. This allows you to get more in the frame with the GFX, but the same compression. And that is one of the benefits of medium format. Obviously, as you saw, zooming in again, another benefit of medium format with a larger sensor, and in this scenario, higher megapixel count, you just get more detail and resolving power. Zooming out right here, very similar to the differences you see between APS-C and full frame, I think it's just a little bit smaller here in this comparison. Let's go ahead and take a look at another image. Here we have the Sony on the left, GFX on the right, and they both look great. Zooming in, again, same thing, nothing wrong with the Sony, still tons of detail and megapixels, but the GFX just takes it to that next level where on the left-hand side, again, you can see it on the skin texture. You see some skin texture here on the Sony. On the GFX, you just have tons of skin texture. And that is just that larger sensor and more megapixels. Zooming out, hard to tell the difference other than the aspect ratio. Let's go ahead and look at one final set of images. For this set, you're going to see here, again, that wider field of view with the GFX, and it's still loading. These files are freaking massive. So standing from the same spot, you get a wider field of view. You can see you get the same compression. Zooming in, you're going to see, actually in this scenario, I mean, actually the same thing. So Sony still has tons of detail in the skin and face, more than you need, and the GFX just takes it to another level. But who is medium format for, and who needs this level of detail? Let's go ahead and wrap up my thoughts and wrap up this comparison. Okay, so what do we think? A lot of you might think that the differences aren't that major. And I think we need to change our perspective. Because when we do a comparison between APS-C and full frame, we always praise full frame for a few key benefits. It's low light capabilities, it's dynamic range, and of course the ability to get better bokeh with full frame lenses and compression. We should look at the same perspective when we look at full frame to medium format. What I mean by that is medium format gives you more dynamic range. It gives you more compression because you're shooting longer lenses and getting different perspectives like we saw in the examples before. 55 millimeter compression, 44 millimeter perspective. Fuji also has a 110 millimeter lens that gives you an 85 millimeter perspective, but the compression of a 110 millimeter lens. And medium format also has better low light. So same differences between format sizes, but yet we kind of grade them differently or think of them from a different perspective. I still think full frame is the sweet spot in performance, size, and image quality, but that doesn't take away from medium format. As a matter of fact, I think what this comparison shows is medium format has its strengths, and if you can't see them, this camera is not for you. But if you're a photographer who needs more resolution, more detail, who's shooting in situations that demand more dynamic range, or wants to be able to create multiple compositions from one image file, medium formats for you. Now that market is a lot smaller than the market for full frame, and it's a lot smaller than the market for APS-C. So hopefully this video shows you some of the key differences and really helps you reframe your perspective on what are the benefits of medium format. If this video is helpful, let me know down in the comments below. As always, guys, I really appreciate having a conversation. So if you download the files and you see something else, also let me know down in the comments below or send me a DM on Instagram. Let's have a conversation. But as always, guys, hopefully you like this video. Press the like button wherever it is. Hit the subscribe button, and I will see you on the next one. Have a good one, guys. Peace.